In this video, we're going to be looking at the domain of a rational function, and we're going to be writing that using interval notation. Recall that inter interval notation uh, has either brackets, if you include the endpoints, or parentheses, if you don't, that corresponds to a closed spot on a graph. This corresponds to an open place on a graph, and you can have numbers uh, like infinity, and you have to break it up. Okay, they may have to break it up. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. It says factor the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve. Okay, and the solutions are the excluded values. So we'll factor this. So we need two numbers that multiply to give negative 56, but add to get negative one. That's that number in the middle. So that's going to be x minus eight and x plus seven, because you multiply those two together, you get negative 56, you add them together, you get the negative one. Okay, so set that equal to zero, x minus eight equals zero, x plus seven equals zero. If we add the eight here and subtract the seven here, that will give us x is not equal to eight, because that's an excluded value, and x is not equal to negative seven. Okay, so how would I write that in interval notation? Okay, so these are the only two numbers that can't be put into this function. So all numbers going from negative infinity to positive infinity can be in there except these two numbers. So I'll start my interval notation by writing negative infinity. And I keep going, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger until I hit one of these numbers. Which one would I hit first if I'm coming from negative infinity? Well, probably the negative one, right? So from negative infinity to negative seven. Cl close it up because well, this has a parentheses because you can't ever get to infinity. And this has a parentheses because it's an excluded value. So we have to have a parentheses there. If we put a bracket, it would say it's included, which it's not. Okay, put a union. And then we'll start again at negative 7. And we'll go all the way to 8. Okay, and then you put a union again. And now all numbers that are bigger than 8. So from 8 to infinity, okay, and there's your interval notation. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So two numbers that multiply to get 81, but add to get 18, that's nine and nine. So this becomes x plus nine times x plus nine equals zero. Notice they're the same, so we only have to solve the one, so x plus nine equals zero. We subtract the nine, and we get x is equal to negative nine, which means it's not equal to negative nine, right? Okay, so again, we'll start at negative infinity because that's the smallest we can get. And we'll travel along until we hit our number. We only have the one this time, so it's negative nine. And then union, and we're going to start again at negative nine, but not include it. Notice neither one of these included the negative nine because it's an excluded value. And nothing else to stop us from going straight to infinity. So there's your interval notation of the domain. Okay, let's try this one. So we set the bottom equal to zero and solve. This is a difference of squares. So it's going to be x squared minus six squared. Okay, so that will be x plus six, x minus six equals zero. Okay, and if we solve both of those, x plus six equals zero, x minus six equals zero, we subtract the six here, but we add it over here. Okay, so that gives us x is equal to negative 6, which is an excluded value, and x is equal to 6, which is an excluded value. Okay, so again, let's start from negative infinity for our domain. Let me write a little d here for domain. So we start at negative infinity, and we increase until we hit the first of one of these numbers. If we're increasing, going up, this one's the one we're going to hit first before we hit this one. So it'll be negative 6, bracket, union not bracket, parentheses, union, parentheses, negative six, just like we did before, okay? And then comma, it goes all the way to six. And then do it again with a six, a parentheses, a union, a parentheses, six, comma, and then nothing else to stop us from going to positive infinity, so that's the domain, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Uh, x squared plus 64 equals zero. Now, this is not a difference of squares. 
A difference is a subtraction between two square things. This is an addition between two square th things, and it cannot be solved in real numbers. So our domain is from negative infinity to infinity with no restrictions. Now, let me quickly show you why this cannot be solved in real numbers. If you get x squared plus 64 equals 0, move the 64 over. Okay, so that's x squared equals negative 64. Now, can a number that's being squared end up with a negative answer? Well, nothing that nothing squared is ever going to be negative. Even if you put in a, ne a negative number here, once it squares, it'll turn out positive. Okay, so if you continue with this problem, you would need to move into complex numbers, including an i for negative square roots. We're going to stay away from that because this is real numbers, not not complex numbers that we're talking about here. Okay, so no restrictions on the domain on that. All right, on this one, looks like it's pretty easy. We just say x plus 1 equals 0, so I subtract 1, I get x is equal to negative 1. So that's my only value that I'm throwing out is the negative 1. So I'll go from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from negative 1 to infinity, and that's the domain. Okay, one more. We need two numbers that are going to multiply to get 1 that are going to add to get 2. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so it's going to be 1 and 1. So x plus 1 times x plus 1 okay, uh, equals 0, and we don't have to do them both, so I'll just do the 1. So that will be x plus 1 equals 0. If we subtract 1 from both sides, x is equal to negative 1, and it seems to have the exact same answer as the last one we just did, right? So it would be the domain would be negative infinity to negative 1, union, negative 1 to infinity, and that is it.